There's actually something I need to do before I start. You'll see in a minute. Okay, so. I'm actually going to take my makeup off. And this is me. So as I stand here, makeup free, there's a few questions I want to ask you. Do you think that I am now less professional because I'm standing here in front of you makeup free? Am I not as pretty because I don't have makeup on? Or am I brave to be standing here in front of a crowd makeup free? Would you stand here makeup free? Do you leave the house makeup free? Do you go to the office makeup free? Do you go to dinner, a date, a club? Do you go makeup free? So we need to start at the beginning. <laughs> this is me. This is me from the age of 10 to 16. I was a model from a very young age. Um, and at 10, I wanted to be a princess. So modeling was fun. It was dress up. It was a character. I really, really did actually enjoy it. But I don't think I was old enough to understand how damaging an industry like that is and can be until I got older. Now, as we know, models are everywhere. We see them everywhere. A lot of people compare themselves to the models that they see. Now, I want to ask you, what do you think of when you think of the standard of beauty? What do you think of when you picture a beautiful person? Just think about it for a second. I know everyone will think of something slightly different depending on where we're from, our generation, but I do think we will have a lot of similarities of what we do consider the standard of beauty, especially the standard of beauty that we see within the media. These could have been some of the things that you said and thought about in your head. And these are the things as a female from my generation, I see as the standard of beauty. I am shown constantly in the media every single day. The top one especially is good skin clear skin, flawless skin. You've got to be skinny, you've got to have long legs, but then you've got to be like hourglass figure, but then you have to have a bum, but then you have to have boobs, and then you have to have long hair, big eyes, big lips, high cheekbones, the list goes on. But there isn't really a way for one person to have every single one of those elements. It's kind of impossible, unless obviously you pay for it, which a lot of people do nowadays, to fit that standard of beauty. But technically, it's kind of humanly impossible. And I was part of the problem. As the model, I was supposed to be showcasing those standards of beauty. But the funny thing was, at that point, 10 to 16, I did have really clear skin, I was tall, I was skinny, I had big eyes, I was blonde, but they still edited me. When I would look in my portfolio, I would be like completely airbrushed. So I didn't have a single mark on my skin. Even though I did have like doll-like porcelain, really clear skin, they would still filter me. They would actually sometimes make my skin paler as well, even though as you can see, I'm extremely pale. They would make me skinnier. They would change so many different parts of me that I do remember even some of my friends going, oh, it doesn't look like you. <laughs> I was like, well, it is. But at that point, a lot of me did fit that standard of beauty. And as I said, at that age, I actually didn't realize how damaging it was until this is me. It's a very different girl to that. I'm 16. I'm at boarding school. Um, I literally basically woke up with acne, like literally overnight, pretty much. 
I had porcelain skin before this, and suddenly I had something that I didn't understand how I had it, and it definitely doesn't fit into the standard of beauty. All of my modeling agencies told me to go away, <laughs> clear my skin and come back in a week, which is impossible. <laughs> As a 16 year old, I was like, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> Nothing obviously helped in a week, definitely probably made my skin worse. So sadly overnight, I was dropped. I lost a career that I had had for six years that I loved because of something that wasn't my fault. But I felt like it was my fault because everyone around me, the industry was kind of telling me, oh, you should not have that and you cannot fit in anymore because you have it. But when I was 16, there wasn't social media. There wasn't as much knowledge as there is now, education. So I actually had nowhere to turn. None of my friends had acne. My family didn't have acne, just me. So I was alone. And in the back of my head, I was like, surely there's other people that have acne, but where are they? Because <laughs> um, they're not here. And I was so uneducated. You obviously don't learn about these things in school. You don't really know where to turn to. And I was so uneducated, I'd actually didn't even use skincare because I was scared to use moisturizer because I thought it would make my acne worse, but actually I probably should have used it because by not using it, I think it made my acne worse. But no one tells you this. Even when you walk into a cosmetic store, you can't navigate it, unfortunately. So where did I turn? The media. I turned back to those magazines that I used to be in to try and find an answer. But again, all those girls were filtered and had porcelain skin and they didn't have acne. So where's the people with acne? Where on earth can I find someone to talk to, to relate to, to help me? And then the acne ads. If you remember when we were teenagers, and so I'm 26 now, so 10 years ago, Acne ads that would come on the TV would be a girl splashing her face with water, <laughs> saying, oh, look at my skin. And they basically all looked like this. They were completely clear, selling an acne product. And as we say, this is me, this is them. Hmm, I couldn't relate. But did I use the product? Yeah, of course I did. Because this was the only thing that I had to go by. So these products that were targeted for me didn't have me in the ad. But then I was like, oh, maybe this is the after because surely like this will happen to me and I'll suddenly have clear skin by washing my face. Um, and I used them and it didn't work. Um, I think I've used every single thing you can think of on your skin. I Googled everything and put it on. I put egg whites on my face. Um, I put papaya on my face. I actually put turmeric on my face and dyed myself yellow for two days. <laughs> Don't recommend. Um, and I tried to scrub it off because I was desperate and no one was educating me. So this was all I could turn to. So I was at the point where I was so alone, I was so lost, I was so upset, and I still couldn't find a person with acne. But surely there's people, right? There are. 80% of people in their lifetime will suffer with their skin. And many of those are actually adults, which I think is also one of the biggest myths that everyone assumes that you only get acne when you are a teenager. Even though I was 16 when I got acne, that's actually considered on the later end because most people develop acne around the age of like 12. And 11% of UK adults are actually currently suffering with their skin. More women than men suffer with acne. So I was part of that, but where are the women who are suffering like me? And then this I find very interesting to show you how big a scale this is. From February 2021 to January 2022, NHS England spent £22.7 million just on topical treatments for acne. That is how many people are suffering and trying to seek help. And obviously I was one of them. So if acne is so common, 80% of people suffer with it, why wasn't there any people in the media with acne? 
so many adults, so many people who we could see, but there was no one there. I was at the point of serious rock bottom. I'm around 21 years old now, so that's already nearly six years with acne, and I still had it. I didn't go and see friends. I didn't go to birthdays. I was at university. I didn't want to go to university because I didn't want people to see my skin. I literally caked myself with makeup, which I knew was bad, but it was the only way I could actually function. If I stepped over at a friend's house, I would sleep in my makeup. I got to the point where I didn't eat. If I came home from university and there was no food in my house, I would wait for my boyfriend to come home from work because I would have an argument in my head where it would be like, the shop's five minutes down the road. But you can't go makeup free because people will see your acne. But then, why would you put on makeup to go to the shop that's five minutes down the road that you then have to come home and take your makeup off? So I literally just wouldn't go. And I wouldn't eat. I would cry every single day when I looked in the mirror. <laughs> my ritual waking up would be counting my spots to see if it had changed from the day before. It was really bad. Then there was a tiny bit of a change in the industry. Social media is a thing now. And there was a movement on social media, a hashtag, called hashtag body positivity. So suddenly, on social media, there was these women within the modeling industry who were different heights, shapes, sizes, ethnicities. There was models with vitiligo, models who wear hijab. Oh my god, this is amazing. The industry's changing, right? This is great. But where's the acne? Isn't skin also part of body positivity? Why am I still not being represented, but everybody else is slowly getting there? It still wasn't a thing, and I was still desperate. So, on the 20th of October 2017, hashtag free the pimple was born. This is me. This is the image I post on social media, which isn't actually as bad as some of the images I have posted. But I was so scared. As you see, I'm still wearing a hoodie. I was like, oh, I'm showing it, but not. And I remember asking my sister and my friends who had clear skin at the time, would you post a makeup free selfie on social media? And they said, no. I said, but you have really good skin. They're like, nah, it's not something I would do. So suddenly I was really brave. And I did it because I was so desperate. I was like, please, can I find one person who can suddenly have skin like me and relate to me? I posted it. I was so scared. And the worst part about it, I think, is I was expecting hate and to be trolled. I was expecting people to be like, ew, disgusting, ugly, uh, I can't believe you're showing your face. Because again, standard of beauty, right? It doesn't fit in. It's, it's bad, it's ugly, you shouldn't show it. But actually, I got the opposite. Because again, 80% of people in their lifetime will suffer with their skin. Suddenly, people could relate to me. They were saying, oh my gosh, thank you so much for showing your skin. You're so brave. My sister's gone through the same thing. I've also gone through the same thing. I wasn't alone. And I didn't think that anyone would use the hashtag, but they did. And suddenly there was faces from all over the world who were like me. But the movement wasn't getting as big as I wanted it to be until my friend was listening to a podcast and it was ID Magazine. And there was a journalist on there speaking about acne, saying that she thinks it's the final frontier of the beauty standards like we're talking about, like body positivity. So I stalked her on Instagram. I was like, oh, I'm actually speaking about acne. And she said, that's amazing. Will you write a manifesto and I publish it online? Sure. I wrote about my acne. She published it on ID Magazine with my big acne face. I remember scrolling and going, ooh. Uh -oh. OK, <laughs> it's a bit different from my modeling days. But she did. She let me write it in my own words. My big acne face was there. And literally within 24 hours, I was all over the world. I was in Team Vogue. I was in Japan. I had the Telegraph emailing me. My acne face was everywhere. From being the model to being the girl with acne to suddenly being all over the world with my acne. But the reason is, is because so many people suffer with their skin, just no one was talking about it. And they realized we need to speak about it, and so many people can relate to it. I was working again. I was one of the first models to model with acne for a skincare brand called Augustinus Bada. I was in Love magazine, and I was photographed by a photographer who photographed Kate Moss with my acne, which was insane. I did this whole flip because I took action into my own hands and said, 
beep to the beauty standard, this is me. And I am part of the beauty standard because I'm real and other people suffer with skin like me. And Free the Pimple has 41.2 thousand posts. It's 41,000 people with acne sharing their skin. And I like to say, I didn't invent acne. I just so spoke about it. But then we get to the point of acne isn't just the way that it looks. Yes, it's a vanity thing, as people think. You need to clear your skin to fit in the beauty standard. But I've got to the point where literally I didn't care what my skin looked like. I would show anyone my acne. I would be happy to walk down the street with all of my pimples. But acne isn't just the way that it looks. It's also painful. So medically, that's why you go to the doctor, I had got to the point where I had severe cysts that I would wake up in pain, I would be bleeding on the pillow, I would get them on my head and I'd have to take paracetamol. So I went on a medication called isotretinoin. It has all of these side effects. So acne is something to not take lightly. It is something that is hard to clear and to be completely honest, I thought my skin would look like this. <laughs> Again, naive, my skin looks like this. And that's okay. My skin is not flawless, it's not poreless. And the biggest thing I want people to take away from this is to realize that flawless skin doesn't exist, neither does poreless, and perfect is something that you will never, ever be able to achieve. Thank you.